गुड मॉर्निंग शेयर आई थिंक एवं द ऑडियंस मेनली यंग पीपल सो द ऑडियंस मोस्ट ऑफ देम यंग सो वेन आई सिट with young people i also feel little bit younger <laughs> so in any way uh my dear elder brothers and sisters and mainly younger brothers and sisters time always moving no force can stop time time stand still right stand still always moving so human being uh i usually say uh as a the distinction generation of 20th century and generation of 21st century those people whose age uh, above 30s that generation uh belongs to 20th century now below 30 uh 20 15 these are the generation of 21st century <laughs> <coughs> sorry so i think most of them generation of 21st century so young people whose age below 20 30 raise hand of course i am not <laughs> i am now over 83 year old so the time always changing past whatever happened past we cannot change future still in our own hand future can be happier joyful he- future is our own hand particularly this young generation the generation of 21st century you can make different world and also you have the opportunity to see that new happy world my generation gone the generation of 20th century i think in a way we created a lot of problem on this planet instead of solving or instead of reducing problem but actually you see increasing much problem so now important to analyze why everybody is want happy life happiness very much related with peace violence always bring suffering yet then then according scientist basic human nature is more compassionate i 
I think uh, every sort of people here, do you like smile or more serious face? Which one? Karsa. <laughs> so people live among the people who show smile and sincere feeling. You feel safe. You feel happy. And one official function. I have experienced in 1954. I went to China and I participated in many occasions, official function. Very serious. <laughs> then in 56, I came to India, Buddha Jesus Liberation. Uh, some formal meeting, more serious. So then, even one hour, difficult to pass away. Uh, when I meet people, they are sitting there smiling. No formality, no serious. And then, you see, uh, I do not know how much time spent. So we human being uh, loves human friendship. Friendship comes honest, truthful. These things related with feeding. These people also are brothers, are sisters. There are different uh, nationality, different race, different religion. These are secondary, not important. Important is we are human beings of this planet. We born, all seven billion human beings born same way. The time of death also same way. Meanwhile, we alive, seven billion human beings very much appreciate human friendship. Friendship very much based on trust. Trust come if you really show them sense of concern of their well-being, then trust come. So therefore, look back 20th century. I think too much violence. First World War, Second World War, and then in the European continent, people you see, remain f with fear. Third World War, possibility. Third World War. And actually, uh, NATO bloc, also a bloc, they are ready to shoot. A nuclear weapon. Some occasion I have visited, I have opportunity to visit Berlin, the very border of East Berlin. I visit West, West Berlin. I think one or two nights I spent there because of some West, West Berliner she uh, invited me. So, the hotel, comfortable. But when I sleep with the feeling, oh, next day, <laughs> what will happen? The war subjects sort of ready to shoot. And similarly, NATO pact, like that. So, even no Kosovo, not because of the hot violence, but the potential of violence very much there. So people remain constantly fear. And then some uh, the historian, they say in 20th century, about 
200 millions of people killed through violence. First World War, Second World War, then Civil War in Russia and also China. And then Korean War, Vietnam War. In the 20th century, I think too much killing. If that amount of violence truly create better shape of the world, then you may justify that not there. Beginning of the 21st century, in spite of so the public level movement, this express desire for peace, 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 but still, Pockets, pockets, here and there, killing, violence. Nowadays, unfortunately, different religious faith also causing violence. Unthinkable. All religions carry main message is message of love, message of forgiveness, tolerance. But the very source of these things also becoming a source of division and hatred and killing. Look, Shia and Sunni in Afghanistan and Syria. There are a lot of problems which we are facing, essentially our own creation. They're like a tsunami, this, uh, Nature disaster beyond our control. But a lot of problem actually our own creation. So this uh, basic human nature, as I mentioned earlier, more compassionate. Why did this happen? When we were young children, they don't care different nationality, different religious faith. So long played together, same. Gradually, we emphasize more on differences, nationality, religious faith, and this country, caste, so on. So these are the sources create division. That's the basis of concept of we and they. That creates violence and bully, exploitation, and worst thing, killing. So all these are ultimately related with our mind, with too much emphasis on differences. Now, the only remedy is go deeper level, we all seven billion human beings are same human being. Physically, mentally, emotionally, all same. Basic nature, as I mentioned earlier, all have the potential of compassion, love, because their life starts that way. Our first experience as a human being, as a social animal, mother's loving kindness, you see, uh, really, how should they, because of the, uh, project, project us. Without mother's love, so loving kindness, we can't survive. So, the, so therefore, and then, now, medical scientists, they also say, constant anger here is eating our immune system. So we, everybody, you see, loves one's own fair health. Take care, maximum way, one's own health. If you really wisely take physical health, you must uh, keep mental level peace. 
constant fear, constant anger, very bad for our health. So these days I'm uh, telling in our education from kindergarten, we should one lesson the while we give the uh, hygiene of physical, we should give education hygiene of emotion. That's very important. Hygiene of physical provide us how to how to because of the keep healthy body. Uh, and a healthy body very very important mind mental peace healthy mind. So this. I think materialistic life, materialistic education, not much pay attention. So now, uh, time come in our education uh, should include hygiene of emotion. For that, uh, more explanation about our emotion, about our mind. Now in India, these knowledge about our mind, about our emotion, over 3,000 years already developed. So India, Bharat, is the, I think the only country among the different uh, sort of country like Egyptian civilization, Chinese civilization, and uh, India civilization, I think this civilization, uh, I think as early as over th around 3,000 years uh, ago, already developed concept of shamatha, concept of vipassana. These are the technique how to bring peace of mind, calm mind. So the other countries, other area, uh, even though you see, accept some sort of God or something, mysterious things, they only pray, pray. This country already developed technique how to bring uh, mental peace. So these are, uh, and then last 3,000 years, this country, I think, produced greatest tangers philosopher, including quantum physics. One of my friend, Raja Ramana, oh, the nuclear physicist, once he told me quantum physics in the West, new concept. But this country, 2,600 years ago, already developed quantum physics. It's true. When I had meeting with scientists, including quantum physicists, then when they explain to me, very familiar subject. <laughs> In some cases, I think we know better. <laughs> because in this country, I think through centuries, analyze what is reality. Not only Buddhism, but also the Hinduism. Is analyze. Firstly, quantum physicists, they still do not know what is the observer. But in this country, over 3,000 years, already investigated where is observer. So, Atma, concept of Atma. That concept, uh, is a, uh, that concept is, is very useful. They, the concept of re rebirth, the basis of that concept, Atma concept, is very, very helpful. This physical, maximum 100 years, uh, with this brain, a certain mind, only 100 years. Uh, but there are people who remember past life. I also met some, you see, remember past life very sort of clearly. So there is something to remember. Therefore, it's past life. And on a scientific basis, 
Now, the explanation about subtle level of mind is continuation. Mind, not like, oh, because of particle, right? Matter. Ka, matter. M- not matter. Matter also have or need substantial cause. In Korea. Cooperative conditions. Cooperative conditions. But the main source is substantial cause. It's a continuation. Uh, today's world, the substantial cause, they went empty, the Big Bang not yet uh, start. Uh, already particle. We call space particle already there. That's the substantial cause. The space particle, no beginning, always there. So that's the substantial cause. Now, Consciousness, consciousness of mind, also changing. So that shows uh, the changing is uh, due to its own causes. So they have a change now here, subtle level change, momentarily changing. Now these things, you see, due to its own causes. Now same substantial cause uh, and cooperative cause. Uh, cooperative condition. For example, eye consciousness, eye organs are cooperative sort of kasa, ka condition. Uh, but there, ma- there is substantial cause. That's the consciousness. Without consciousness, the eye, perfect eye organ cannot develop uh, consciousness, eye consciousness. So therefore, substantial cause of every sort of consciousness, the continuation. So at the time of conception, conceptual, or the physical level, uh, substantial cause is from parent, parent's parent, and further goes at the time of our jellyfish, like that. So the consciousness, substantial cause, is continuation of consciousness. Without that, consciousness is, it cannot develop. So, so therefore, that's the basis, reason. There is continuation of consciousness. That's the basis of the uh, life after life. So that further, also they uh, elaborate, then Atma. <laughs> but Buddha rejected independent self. So Buddha created concept of Anathma theory. <laughs> That's differences among the world religion. You know, Sangya philosophy, over 3,000 years, uh, there are two types, two groups. One accept God, one accept no, no God. Then Jain philosophy, no God, no creator. And then Buddhism, same, no independent, absolute creator, but our self is creator. So self-creation. So there's differences. Uh, those religion which start from Middle East, Judeo-Christian mainly, and then Islam, all believe creator. So in the philosophical field, there's many differences, but all carry, as I mentioned earlier, all carry same message, message of love, forgiveness, tolerance, self-discipline all wonderful. So different philosophy is necessary. Among the human being, there are so many different mental dispositions. Therefore, you need different way of approach. 
but all different way of approach is same goal to create more compassionate human being. Uh, that goal also happy life. The theistic religion, wonderful. We all created by God. What is the uh, nature of God? Infinite love. So we all children of that kind of father. So if you seriously thinking, practice, then how can kill human being by human being? We all children of one father. Then non-theistic religion is everything depend on our own action. Our future really depend present action. Action is it related with our emotion. So more compassionate emotion uh, that creates ahimsa in this country. The thousand years old concept of ahimsa. Ahimsa uh, does not mean out of fear and resisting, harming other. No, ahimsa. You have the ability to attack, to destroy, yet out of respect, they are right, resisting, harming. That's ahimsa. So ahimsa, action level, ahimsa. Motivation level, karuna. So this country, over 3,000 years, the tradition, karuna and ahimsa. That karuna, also, you see, the, through meditation, we can increase that. That's, I think, the greatness of Arya Bhumi's tradition. Truly. So therefore, now the younger generation, the generation of the 21st century, now you are the part of the builder of happy 21st century. Happiness very much related with peace. So I always telling the 20th century, too many violence, too many suffering. Now 21st century should not repeat that kind of century. Now 21st century should be century of peace. So peace through inner peace. Without inner peace, you can't develop genuine peace. So in order to develop inner peace, the theistic religion pray to God. But here, non-theistic religion, the Indian, mainly Indian tradition, is, you see, uh, training our mind, reduce anger through training. Like physical sort of, because of the health. Firstly, you have to know what kind of genes, germs, rare or harmful to our physical and that counter sort of force within this sort of germ way, like that. So accordingly, uh, we avoid the, these germs which create pains or illness. So out of, because of that, with knowing these germs, this sort of particle harmful, for our health. This germ is good for our health. So in order to, to, to take care of your own body health, you see, we should know what, what things harmful, what things good. Similarly, the hygiene of emotion, what kind of emotion uh, brings inner peace? That's compassion, karuna. What is the opposition of compassion? It's anger. Anger, no value. Immediately destroy peace of mind. Then 
constantly, you see, as I mentioned earlier, eating our immune system. And then physical condition become weaker, weaker, weaker. So healthy mind, peaceful mind, very important for healthy body. So now materialistic life, through materialistic uh, uh, education, we are not adequate knowledge about our inner world. So therefore, I am trying to revival of ancient Indian knowledge about our emotion, about our mind, uh, and uh, with combined with modern education, modern technology. India really have the ability to combine the education or technology, scientific research, these are material matter. And meantime, how to create peace of mind. The peace of mind, very useful to carry investigation. Once our mind, too much emotion, you can't carry investigation properly. So calm mind. So calm mind, very important. With calm mind, we can see things objectively. Too much emotion, we can't see the things, object. Oh. So, I think one of the aspects of destructive emotions, such as strong, uh, what is it, the attachment, uh, strong hatred, anger. You see, at that moment, your whole mind focusing just one aspect of that object. So you can't see the holistic. So without this sort of emotion, mind remain neutral. Then our intelligence to investigate unbiasedly, no, unbiasedly, real. Uh, the reality. Without emotion, we can see holistic picture, then investigate. Uh, too much emotion, uh, we are focusing just one aspect, so we can't see the holistic picture. So calm mind is very important for your study, uh, in your class, your calm mind, very important. I also, my early uh, life, uh, teenage, uh, till I think 15, uh, I also carry study, a uh, student. So at that time, I was quite lazy. So, uh, so you see, when the time or oh, Oh, time, time is because I choose you. Oh, I think time, uh, the morning, one morning session, one afternoon session. So time about that session come, I feel something like whole sky darken. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you see, uh, occasionally, some holiday, oh, then tomorrow, holiday. Oh, I feel very happy. Now tomorrow, no lesson. <laughs> so I think you, these young brothers, sisters, also I think more or less is the same experiences. But, you see, uh, those things, those subjects which I learned with some sort of reluctance, gradually I really found immense help. This education provides the, how say the, something like opening our brain, our human intelligence. Education is very important. So we can see educated people, uneducated people, certainly emotional level, all the same, but you see, the uh, life, carry life according to circumstances. 
particular set of circumstances, these educated people are much successful. Therefore, education is very, very important. Now, meantime, so please, our younger brothers, sisters, please pay much attention for study, for education. Occasionally, you need holiday. Uh, uh, but when you are in the class, your mind must focus on the subject. Uh, you see, on the classroom with some book, but your mind to go here and there, not good. So must concentrate on the subject. Then the important thing is, no matter how brilliant brain, the motivation side, anger, too much selfish, and then this intelligence sometimes is becoming more harmful. So this wonderful human intelligence must combine with warm-heartedness. So that's very important. That I always see, tell people, and particularly younger generation. So this time, I want to, to share with you, and number one, as a human being, uh, human intelligence, properly used for that, warm-heartedness important. Then, second level, religious harmony. This country is the example religious harmony. All major religious traditions live together in this country. So beside homegrown different traditions, the from outside, Zorazudin, and then uh, Christian, Christian uh, uh, Islam, all these, Judaism, all these come here, live together harmoniously. So therefore, the religious harmony uh, is, I think, India is example. Religious harmony is possible. This country, over 3,000 years, religious harmony, tolerance there. On the basis of ahimsa, like that. And then, modern India, now you need more attention about ancient Indian knowledge about mind, about emotion. That you should pay more attention. Uh, just modern education, very much oriented about material value. That education, that kind of education, creates materialistic life, materialistic culture. So when this uh, when that society facing some problem, emotional problem, they only rely on alcohol, drugs. They do not know how to tackle our emotion. So India have the ability to combine ancient Indian knowledge, how to tackle our emotion, then modern knowledge, how to build country economically, technologically, and all these modern sort of things. So India, I think, uh, in the past history, India, truly great nation. Now in future, also you see, this nation can make certain significant contribution regarding world peace through inner peace. Thank you. Now some questions. His Holiness the Dalai Lama, uh, sir, you started the lecture with uh, World War I, World War II and the order and the century being built upon it. Sir, every great civilization of the past, whether Indus Valley civilization or the Mesopotamian civilization, came to an abrupt end. We didn't even know about it. So do you think this civilization of ours, which is built upon this global order in the 20th century, is sustainable or would we meet a similar tragic end? and what would be the cause? Growing inequality or environmental disruption, what's your view? I believe through education, 
and through deeper experience, human being, generally speaking, becoming more mature. Look, 20th century, even in 20th century, uh, in early part of 20th century, when nation declare war on your neighbor, the, all the citizens of that nation, without slightest question, they proudly join war effort. Now that later part of 20th century completely changed. Like weather war, American people very much against uh, war, like that. So the early part of 20th century, like France and Germany, you see, are the enemy through centuries, fighting, killing. Then after Second World War, they create uh, the European Union, headed by German Chancellor Adena and France de Gaulle. So these are the, we human beings mature through too much suffering. So I feel, judging 20th century, I think humanity uh, becoming more mature and then uh, think common interest more rather than national interest. And one time, uh, the Kaza Jared. Oh, Binubaba. Binubaba. Achaya Binubabe. You see, once express idea A, B, C. A, Afghanistan. B, Burma. C, Sri Lanka. Then India, Pakistan. Some kind of federation. So you see, at the modern India, at least. You see, East India, South India, West India, North India, different language, different script, but all happily remain in union. So this, I think the uh, human being becoming more mature and seeing common interest like that. So that's my view. Next question. His Holiness, my question is that women are usually at the bottom of the chain in any society. I would like to know whether there will ev ever be a Lady Dalai Lama. Firstly, Buddha give equal right, male and female the highest ordination, bhikshu, bhikshu ni. Uh, and then in Tibetan or uh, in Indian great Buddhist master, some bhikshu, some bhikshu nis. And yoga, yogi, yogi ni, they are equal. Uh, then, I think, I think, more than I think, 15 years uh, ago, one occasion, one magazine, in f French, one magazine, mainly ladies, uh, for ladies, the editor, as he came to see me, and she asked me, in future, Dalai Lama can be female Dalai Lama. Then I immediately say, yes, if the circumstances is such female body more effective, then certainly yes. In among Tibetan sort of high lama, like something Dorchu Parmo, I think since seven seven hundred years ago already, that whole lineage, female, very high sort of position among the Rihinga nation, something Dorchu Parmo. Like that. So it is quite, I think, in Tibetan 
sort of tradition, Buddhist tradition. Very liberal, no problem. Thank you very much. Huh? Thank but of course, uh, the 14 Dalai Lama, <laughs> now through surgery, you can, <laughs> I think it's impossible to, <laughs> to make a female. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Thank you so much. Namaste, Your Holiness. Namaste and welcome. Uh, I'm Elsie Gabriel, environmentalist and journalist. My question to you is, I mean, we beg your message today on fighting climate change and we adults leaving behind a more intact full planet for our next generation, our students here. Yes, it is very, very important. Oh, global warming. Um, really now become very serious according to my own lifetime when we were young those mountains the surrounding Lhasa uh, usually you see some whole year some snow but that gradually year by year less and less now in Dharmasala, uh, now last now 59 years, or one year I spent in Mussoorie. Then 1960, the governor of India arranged my more or less permanent residence in Dharmasala. So summer 60, I shifted to Dharmasala. That winter, very thick snow at our place. Uh, saw ashram, they are very thick, about one foot. You see, thick. Then, year by year, snow fall less, 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 less. So, few occasion, I sort of request some local authority. Now this. Uh, so the eventually shortage of water may face at Dharamsala, so uh, concerned people should make some plan water reserve Dharamsala. At the moment, no worry. Ka. Ka. Uh, so, so the, uh, now in Tibet also, now gradually uh, level of the river and some lakes less 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 so when i was the flu was flying on and from europe to india on afghanistan very clear sort of picture and Previously, huge lake, and now some cases become very small lake. Some cases completely dry. So therefore, now they, uh, due to global warming, the water shortage really become very, very serious. So we have to think very seriously how to take also to care about water, about environment. It's very, very important. Yes? His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. I'm Pallavi Kojar from IIT Bombay. I would like to ask you that what is ah. the relationship between spirituality and eternity? I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know. Eternity is not correct. Do you remember? Oh, like space and atom, eternal, eternal is the way. No. Uh, this is uh, this is hmm? Professor Doctor Mohammed Nada, uh, Culture and Education Counselor, Embassy of Egypt. Uh, thanks for your excellency to, men to mention the civilization of Egypt and. Uh, 
uh, the previous and long history civilizations of Egypt, India, and China. Uh, the questions for the question for your Excellency: uh, What's the expectation for the future? Integrating the new technologies, especially in this very uh, uh, high-end technological festival, and thanks for the invitation for this event. Uh, what's uh, your Excellency expectation of the role of technology in taking taking into consideration these big civilizations and historical countries like India, Egypt, and China? Thank you. Yes, nowadays. Uh, nowadays, this is some, this is scientist or technologist. They say, "Karsa, uh, some no. artificial intelligence." Oh, artificial intelligence uh, through technology. I don't believe that. <laughs> mind is mind. Uh, one story. Uh, in many years ago, one occasion in Japan. Uh, one meeting some scientist, so one Japanese scientist uh, who uh, believe only brain, no consciousness. Uh, so there are a number of scientists who say believe only brain, no such consciousness or mind. So that uh, Japanese scientist, you see, so they also to believe that. Meantime, he also you see, very much worry about you see, recently his son passed away. So very much worry. So then only brain. Then I think you should remove that part of brain. Then no longer any worry. <laughs> so the uh, emotion related with a certain level of brain. I think this part of the brain mainly related with uh, sensorial consciousness. Now, this brain, emotion. So, uh, if emotion, including suffering, because of sadness, uh, purely related with brain, and then you should, you should operate. That's... Uh, Impossible. Now, early part of 20th century, many scientists not accept the uh, existence of mind, only brain. The later part of 20th century, through their experiment, investigation, uh, particularly those individuals who can meditate few hours, uh, so while they meditate, some wires put on their head, and then some investigation. Now, later part, some of the top scientists, especially brain specialists, now they feel, oh, there is something, whatever you call mind or consciousness, it can affect our brain. Because of Because uh, is all this is referring to you know, neuroplasticity? Uh, oh, through so training our mind or mental state makes effect that. So now, some scientists already accepted existence of mind. So over 30 years, uh, I have serious discussion with modern scientists, mainly uh, four fields, cosmology, uh, and then neurobiology, then physics, including quantum physics, then psychology. In these mainly four fields, uh, as a result of uh, discussion over 30 years, it become very clear, it's very useful to mutual learning. We also find some useful information, like Big Bang Theory, 
essential in Buddhist text clearly mentioned for five elements. This is the basis of whole galaxies come and disappear, come and disappear. But more detailed explanation, the scientific finding, very useful. Then, Kursa, neurobiology, through there's a certain sort of knowledge, yoga practice, you see, have some sort of explanation about the different channels, these things, quite useful. And the Tibetan medical system also, you see, have some knowledge, so useful. Then, quantum physics, uh, the India, as I already mentioned, you see, quantum physics, I think that subject, when we discuss with the scientists, that subject is very familiar for us, like that. Then consciousness. Sometimes I sort of, maybe too bold, I'm mentioning, I express the modern psychology, uh, compare ancient Indian psychology, then modern psychology looks like kindergarten level. Indian psychology, highly developed. So many scientists very, very eager to learn from ancient Indian psychology in the knowledge about mind, emotion. So, Kasati, could you do it? Hi, good morning, His Holiness. So, so the, uh, what's the technology? Ultimately, human beings mind control. So I think just technology alone produce human mind, impossible. Yes, next question. Can we have the next question? Yeah. Good morning, His Holiness. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Preeti Goel, and it's an honor and privilege to be here. Um, I want to ask a question wherein I think most of us can benefit. Um, the question is, how can we practice compassion and if there are any tips for where we can manage our anger or any books that you could suggest? Please, thank you. As I mentioned earlier, we are in the category of different mammals. We are a social animal. Any social animal, biologically, there is certain sort of today ability to bring together. So, other animal, uh, social animal, they have a limited sort of altruism among themselves. That's very necessary for survival. So, individual social animal, their survival depend on the community. So, sense of sort of oneness, sense of sort of community there. Without that, they can't survive. Then we human beings, also social animals. Therefore, the seed of compassion, biologically, there. Now the important is, uh, when we were young, these human value very much sort of fresh. Then once we join modern education, no one talking about this inner value. So then, these basic sort of, uh, sort of value become dormant survey, dormant. And just material value, money, power, all these, then no, re no, no relevant, this inner value but society, as a social animal, in the family. The family, uh, billionaire, very rich, but without affection in the family member, that family, that family never be happy family. Poor Becker, materially, very, very poor, but full of, as uh, they uh, effect, affection, very happy, can be very happy sort of 
family. Not that we are social animal. Biologically, we need certain sort of emotion which bring together. So I feel, you see, the, uh, then so we have this intelligence. So use intelligence, the basic human value, then can further kasoda increase, uh, or at least kept. So these things, compassion, uh, not sort of talking about next life, or moksha, or nirvana, compassion, our dangerous life. The warm-heartedness is very important. Part of our sort of education about our health. So we can teach these things. Not oh, Buddha say such and such things, or oh, uh, other sort of spiritual leaders say such and such things. No, not relying on these quotations. Just to simply uh, common sense. Use common sense like that. Okay. Next question. Good morning, sir. To bring the peace of mind and peace in the world, which religion we must follow? All religion carry same message, <laughs> message of love. I already mentioned, you see, different method, different philosophy, but all carry same message, message of love. The question is, once you whether you accept religion or not, up to individual. Once you accept religion, then you should be serious, sincere. Then all religion have same potential. I never say that Buddhism is best. I never say. Like medicine. You see, you cannot say, pick up one medicine, this is the best medicine. You cannot say. According to the patient's condition. Then we can say, for your case, this medicine is best. Like that, religion, you cannot say one religion is best. We cannot say, according to the practitioner's mental disposition. To some people, uh, theistic religion is much more powerful. Uh, some people, non-theistic religion, much more powerful. Like that. Next. Vandami Bhante. Um, sir, I do know about uh, the cause and effect, the combined Vipak, okay. So now, uh, when we see that there are earthquakes, there are tsunamis, and it's kind of lot of people die at the same time, like a Kamma is, uh, is actually reason for your death and birth both. So how does, how does that happen? Lot of people die at the same time. And how do we remove that fear if, if that happens with me? So why does that happen? Lot of people die together. Thank you. Lelia, Tangre, Sa, the Tumung Sasha Velagic, Kekusos Sasha Velagic, Namda Mong Shujore. So, with regard to Indian tradition, so with regard to karma, which is in the Indian, according to the Indian tradition, um, you know, there are karmas which are um, said to be collective karmas. Which could be, I mean, which could ripen in in, in, in the environmental in the environment that you live in, so that I mean, these kind of things happen. So, the subject karma, uh, there are a lot of explanation, very very detailed sort of, because of the categories and mention. Uh, broadly speaking, yes, some sort of common karma, and common karma make contribution regarding the Big Bang, these things. Like that. Next question. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask, how do we understand God? Is it a concept or an existence? Due to different philosophical views. So it is a uh, wrong person to ask that question. Buddhism, no God. <laughs> so, uh, so strictly speaking, uh, from the theistic religious viewpoint, uh, 
Buddhist uh, Kasadimindi. Atheist. Atheist. So wrong person to ask. <laughs> oh, there's one story. One story uh, in Tibet. Someone who have not much knowledge about this whole system of Buddhahood or the, the Sanskrit word Gade Gade Para Gade Para Sam Gade Buddhi Soha. It's a stage step by step, eventually become Buddha. So without knowing these things, the, then uh, someone, you see, uh, the, 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 the person, suppose I'm a Lama, suppose to give teaching. So without much knowledge about these things, then someone stand among the audience, someone stand, then ask, where is uh, Buddha or God? Mm. Uh, uh, and then the Lama is mentioned with this, this kind of finger, or point to space. In empty space, Kasata, so the teacher actually <coughs> responded by saying that up there in the empty space, the Buddha stays or you know, uh, resides in a crystal palace. So that's a nonsense. <laughs> Buddha nature here. Yeah. Our ultimate nature of our consciousness is pure. All negative emotion is, you see, due to certain cause it happened. But pure mind is clear. We usually call clear light. That's Buddha nature. Tathagata Garva. Okay. Pranam, you spoke so much of compassion. We have, uh, in practicing compassion, should we give more importance, superiority to human life as compared to animal life? Life is concerned. All sentient beings have sort of life. So each one loves their own life. Therefore, the vegetarianism is very important. So, the thousands, thousands, millions, millions of animals uh, for economic reasons, that I think too far. And then the fish, limitless fish, explore, exploit, without any feeling. That I think, uh, I think very sad. So we must respect all form of life. So India's vegetarianism, very important. Now sometimes uh, I notice, you see, when f aeroplane flying, so see a lot of poultry in early period, not much. In the name of economic development, a lot of also the killing animal also come. I think that I think should be uh, careful. I feel that. His Holiness, as far as you know, the Tibetan monastic institution uh, everywhere, their common kitchen now completely stopped using non-vegetarian food, always vegetarian food. Okay. His Holiness, is rainbow body a true phenomenon? And if it is, how do we achieve it? Rainbow body, very far, no hurry. <laughs> I have some knowledge, but I have, I not yet sort of reach even first step. So, very difficult. Better study philosophy, shunyata, and then study about buddhicitta, these two things. 
I also, you see, spent over 67, well, 60, 70 years meditation, thinking about shunyata, about altruism, buddhichitta, really affects my emotion, my mind. But the, as are the rainbow, rainbow body, only on theoretical level. Hello, uh, hello Holiness, uh, hello His Holiness, I am Megha Jada. I want to ask one question that uh, how to teach our kids not to get angry? As I already mentioned, through training, awareness, what the value of anger, what is the value of compassion, then you see people develop more interest about compassion. Firstly, you see, they love physical health. And then also, you see, the lady sometimes uh, half joke I mentioning, the lady spend some money for what's it, kasa? Cos kasa? Cosmetics. Cosmetics, and including lipstick, these things. Uh, a lot of sort of external beauty, without inner beauty, no good. So a more compassionate attitude, smile, oh, that's more important, isn't it? Many years ago, in the 60s, one, uh, originally, uh, monk official, wonder wonderful sort of person, uh, I trust him, wonderful. So, uh, eventually he disrobed. Uh, and then one day I teased him, oh, your wife, not that much attractive. Then his answer is, physically not much attractive, but inner beauty is extremely good. Then I have nothing to say. <laughs> so Thank inner you. beauty is important. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh